today I'll be talking about the reasons for oversell. We've just given a brief overview of uh, what we do. So, uh, the major advantage in overseeing playing fields is the ability for wear recovery during the higher usage winter months. Uh, the addition of a cool season for all grass not only protects and establishes warm season grass from excessive wear, but also provides some cushioning for players using that surface. Uh, the key to good oversight slash germination, um, good uniformity, so that's obviously uh, in, the, uh, in the application of the seed, so you need to have a good, good uh, operator for oversight. Uh, good, good soil seed contact. If you don't have good seed soil contact, um, the seed's going to struggle, so it needs to have uh, good soil contact. Moisture retention. Um, obviously, you need to keep the seed moist, otherwise the seed, the seed will die. So, um, combination of both of the above ensures moisture in the seed is maintained. So, it kind of goes hand in hand. If you've got uh, good seed soil contact, then it's going to be a lot easier to retain the moisture. So, the way we do it is usually over soak and then probably top dress. Uh, at Amy Park, because we've got a high usage. Um, very minimal uh, time to do it. We probably seed, and then we probably use about 10 cubic metres of sand top dress. So um, we seed a fair bit. We'll, we'll go into that a bit later. Um, and then adequate nutrition, successful germination, and vigour of new seedlings. So like Adrian said, something probably high, high phosphorus. So just to get it started. Uh, we use a speed seed 1600. Um, the reasons for that is minimal disturbance of the turf surface, quick and easy application of seed. Uh, it also punches 18 holes, small holes, a square beater, and gives better seed and soil contact and uniformity. So, I mean, there are other machines out there where you can either scarify or slice or something like that, but it disturbs the surface more. more and if we've got uh, such high event schedule, then something uh, you don't really need to stir the surface because it can become, become unstable quickly. So we use uh, speed seed um, and it's a quick and easy cog adjustment for precise seeding rate. So on the old machines we've got levers or handles you, you move across and sometimes you lose uh, where you want to the adjustment is. So if you've got cogs they're set, it's a set rate so you just need to know what cog you're using. Uh, over sowing, that's the, the speed, the speed seed. So we can probably put out, uh, probably do it in two hours. Uh, probably a hectare in two hours. That's probably at a rate of 200 kilos a hectare. So, and the uh, the hole could fit probably about four bags. So we're using round about to fill it twice, once at the start and once halfway through. So it's a pretty handy uh, tool for us. There's our uh, application rates and timing. Um, with such high use, basically we're seeding all the time. So if you wait till your surface gets uh, thins out or becomes you know, a lot of wear, then you've uh, you kind of missed the boat. You've got to keep uh, on top of it. So they're all the seeding rates. So from the 4th of March, we use 200 kilos a hectare to the 21st of February. Uh, which was the other day, we used 400 kilos a hectare, so not every 12 months, we put out about 1,725 kilos. So, like I said, you just got to keep on top of it. If you uh, let it thin out or it gets on top of you, then you've missed the boat. And with international sides playing there, uh, it doesn't look good, so and you just haven't got the time to uh, catch up. Then the next thing is, is turf replacement, so you'd rather seed than, than replace the turf. So. <clears throat> uh, the asterisk there, 17th of September, we just went up the corridor, so we don't always over sow the whole ground. Um, sometimes it's just the corridor needs it. So during, during the soccer season, uh, it's a lot of the players up the corridor, so obviously that thins out, and then you're in the goal squares as well. Um, so, and then from 10th of October, the 21st of February, obviously. It's pretty even up until then, up through the warmer months, so we actually uh, exceeded our expectation of what we needed to, to, to
to see. So we had a pretty good coverage through that, that period and uh, I actually thought that uh, we'd need to see it a lot more than that. So we're cutting it about 22 mil uh, soccer, so which is a pretty good height. PFF value recommended is I think 18 to, to 32. So cutting it 22, I thought we'd lose a little bit more than what we did. So uh, speed seat, we've actually taken the brush off the seat, speed seat. Um, the brush is usually there so you can brush the seat into the holes. So, but the brush actually disturbs a lot of uh, loose, loose matter on the top or if you've uh, sand given in any holes, it actually pulls the sand out. And if you fill seeding every three or four weeks, it can pull a lot of young seedlings out that have germinated and it's only been up for three or four weeks. So um, brush is usually back there and we've pulled it out. So for obviously yeah, minimal disturbance to the surface. So in park after germination, um, we basically use the, the SR variety seeds, the 4220 and the 4600. Um, we found excellent recovery uh, and excellent wear tolerance. The exposure, the only real small negative about it, they do take a bit longer to uh, establish compared to some of the other devices. But once they mature, there we found we can't you can't wear them. So uh, that's that's what we use. Um, yeah, and they go all right. Uh, spring renovation at Olympic Park. Um, Harry has the deep time using uh, 12 millimeter tines, scarified in two directions for the Turf Tech WT uh, series renovator using three millimeter tungsten tip blades. Swept with the Turf Tech sweeper to remove all the debris, over sewing with sports turf right throughout the kilos. Um, Top dressing using 40 cubic metres. We don't always use the same amount of uh, top dressing, just depending on how bare it is or whether it's uh, rough, whether we need to, to smooth it out. Uh, only park, like I said, we probably only ever go with five, five to 10 cubic metres, probably, probably once a month, just uh, for thatch control and, like I said, to uh, keep the seed in place and keep the moisture retention up. Um, Application of 250 kilos of high feed slow release fertilizer just to help for root, root establishment. Uh, that's after the renovation. I think that was about six weeks after. So, these are the applications for newly established Gosh's One. Um, we used wash sod on Gosh's One, the training field for Melbourne, uh, Victory, and Storm. Uh, we used the Legend Cooch base, uh, and then probably three weeks later, once it established, we went with those uh, great TSR variety ryegrasses. So um, we've got two fields, a 300 uh, centimetre deep uh, perch water table field. Uh, we had a little bit of trouble establishing the sea, obviously because of the, uh, the nutrition and the sea, so these were a bit lower. Uh, the, the other field that ran East West was basically uh, 150 mil overplay with sand slits and pickup lines. So which that established a little bit quicker. Um, so we'll put more seed into the, the 300. Uh, and they're, they're the rates. So uh, over that period we've used about yeah, 1,500 kilos of seed. Uh, it gets a lot of use. It probably gets uh, the 300 field probably, I'd say, has about 10, 10 to 15 training sessions a week. So try and establish your rye grass in that, you've just got to keep the seeding and seeding it. So um, a lot of it get kicked, kicked out. If we can get 10% of that rye grass we seed to maturity, then I think we're going well. So that's why we've just got to keep on keep the seeding. Squash is one after renovation. That's through the middle of the year. Um, this uh, it's pretty hard to see. This is the Melbourne Heart game, obviously the 4th of February. Um, some of the advantages of having a really well covered field of rye grass. Uh, as you can see, it's, we had about 45 mil in about an hour there. Uh, the game was supposed to start at 8 o'clock, started at 9.20. They were actually thinking about pulling it off and, and postponing it to the Sunday. Um, but the ground drained in about 20 minutes. 
from what you see there, in 20 minutes, that was that was all gone, and they were on there playing probably another 20 minutes after that. So, a good rye grass cover will help, will actually help change. So, if you go to a field and you've got a good patch of rye, and then next to it is a boggy patch, the, the uh, good cat patch of rye will always grow better than something that's, uh, that's boggy or yeah, it's got a lot of organic, dead organic matter on it. So, um, and we catch our clippings as well, so it just helps the, uh, the organic layer. You can see down the bottom left, um, mm -hmm. sieve feed down there and out past the uh, touch line on the side, there was probably about four to five inches of water, so <coughs> the players and rest were walking up there and water was up to their ankles, so and that, that all disappeared in about 20 minutes. So. Um, because the FFA, that was the end, end of the season, because the FFA had such a short timeline with games, uh, I think it was the Central Coast had a game on Wednesday, so they didn't want to have to come back Sunday. So we actually convinced the referees to come out there every half an hour just to inspect the pitch. They wanted to call it off, and we said, just give it half an hour, give it half an hour. And uh, after about two inspections, I said, yeah, try to go, let's play. And at that stage, it was still raining, so still raining and uh, throwing that away in 20 minutes, which is fantastic. Um, basically, and that's the uh, AFL life cycle. Uh, ground was covered for three or four days. Um, we filled it up, and we didn't even have to reset after that, so uh, SR Bride has handled that very well. Um, like I said, very good wear times and recovery, so uh, that was uh, all the profile that they put on the, uh, the surface. So, it. Any questions? I was probably the only one who watched the, the, the game over the weekend. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Rebels. The, yeah. Uh, how did the uh, the ground stand up to uh, two tons of tries crashing each other? Quite surprising, actually. I've never really experienced a Super 15s game before. So with the scrums, everybody tells me they, they do a bit of damage. So there was no real deep dipping. Um, there was a lot of scuff marks and a lot of skid marks and the guys are a bit like bulls, they scratch and kick and, and then the, the guys, some of the guys are two or three inch stops and uh, they're big boys, they're about 140 kilos so you get about eight of them in each side of the scrum, they can do a bit of damage but first game was alright, might be a different story halfway through the season.